Why do most people go their whole entire life struggling so bad and end up never making any wealth at all, while a small number of people end up making such insane amounts of wealth that it's not only more than enough for them, it's more than enough for their children and their children's children. It lasts for generations. Well, I submit to you that the number one problem that most people have when it comes to finances, when it comes to money, when it comes to wealth creation, is that most people don't even know what wealth is. And my question to you is, how can you build something that you don't even know what it is? I wanna hear, drop it in the comments right now, what do you think wealth is, okay? Go ahead, just drop it in the comments, what do you think wealth is, okay? And I'll give you a little hint. Wealth is not money, okay? See, many people think that if only I could just get a lot more money, then I would be wealthy, right? But the truth is, money is not wealth. And that means that wealth is actually something that you, have, you may have never considered until now. Now, why would I say something like money is not wealth? Well, here's an example, okay? Here in America, uh, there is a place here in America called the Federal Reserve Bank. Okay, now the Federal Reserve Bank, number one, it's not federal, <laughs> okay? So it's, it's not necessarily a government uh, institute. Number two, it's not a reserve. And number three, it's not a bank. It's not a bank that me and you could go and deposit and withdraw money from. So what is the Federal Reserve Bank? Well, the Federal Reserve Bank is out here just printing money, okay? Like one of the reasons why we are headed into a recession is because we are printing money and because we are printing money, it is lowering the actual intrinsic value of the dollar bill. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think of like this, this institution that's out there just printing money, like I, a couple of years ago, I had this thought like, huh, they're out there printing money, but you know, and it's something crazy. I, I believe it was in the, uh, in the pandemic, uh, they had printed off like 60% of all cash in the United States that existed from the inception of cash until, you know, the pandemic. 60% of the cash was printed out just during that season. And I had an interesting thought at that time. I said, huh, this is interesting. They've printed out like billions and trillions of dollars worth of physical paper, right? They, they printed out tons and tons and tons of cash but you know what they didn't print out? They didn't print more wealth. How do I know? Because with more cash doesn't necessarily mean more wealth. So again, I want you to ask yourself this question. So what is wealth? Okay, so there's a really cool quote by Robert Kiyosaki, uh, the rich dad, poor dad guy, okay? And Robert Kiyosaki says it like this. I think it's an interesting quote. I do think that it goes deeper than this, but Check this quote out from Robert Kiyosaki. Robert says it like this. Wealth is the ability to live forward without working. I'll say it again one more time. Wealth is the ability to live forward without working. Now, I do think that that is an interesting uh, description and an interesting uh, perspective on wealth, but I don't believe that that is the fullness of what wealth is. And uh, I wanna to explain to you why. Let's come over here to the board. I'm gonna draw y'all a little picture, okay? So let's say you are on a deserted island, okay? Here's this deserted island, and it's just you there. Here is a palm tree, okay? And maybe the palm tree is like, got a couple coconuts or whatever. And you're here on the deserted island, okay? Let me ask you a question. On this side of the deserted island, it's just you there. What if you had this gigantic treasure chest, okay? And here's a lock, okay? So here's a big treasure chest. And in this treasure chest, you've got millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of cash. Just chilling here on the beach. All these green squibbles, scribbles uh, represent cash, okay? 
And let's say, you know, you're on this deserted island and you've got 50 million worth of cash. Woohoo, right? But here's the problem. You're there on the island all by yourself, right? And you've got this humongous stack of $50 million cash, but there's no one there. There's nothing to buy that you can't even burn the money to keep warm because you don't, all you have is this cash. Now, let me ask you the question again. In this context, is money wealth? And the answer is a very obvious no. See, now here's something that I want you guys to take mention of, and maybe you can write it down or even just drop it here in the comments, okay? Here's what money is. Money is, let me write it here on the board. So money itself is not wealth, okay? Money Money is a measurement of wealth. But money itself is not wealth, okay? So money itself is not wealth. So then what is financial wealth? If you're taking notes, you can write this down. This is a, a definition that I've come up with. Uh, I've been studying wealth now for, for years, a uh, couple of decades now. What is wealth? How does wealth work, right? So if m money is not wealth, what is wealth? And I'm gonna give you guys my definition. I'm not saying it's the definition, I'm just saying it's a definition. But I wanna go deeper into this definition because I really think that it's going to illuminate the, the purpose and the function and what is wealth and how you can build it. So here's my different definition of wealth, okay? Financial wealth is the ability to provide abundant value for someone other than yourself that in return creates abundant options for you. I'll say it one more time. Financial wealth is the ability to provide abundant value for someone other than yourself that in return creates abundant options for you. If you're taking notes, you can write this down. The better you are at creating value for someone other than yourself, the wealthier you will become. Hey, I really hope that you're enjoying the video. I wanna invite you guys. I have recently created a free training teaching people how to make money online. My students are literally making anywhere from five to $10,000 a month. And some of them even make hundreds of thousands of dollars, not in a year, but in a single day. If you want more information on how you can get started, all you need is a phone and a laptop. You can go to digitalproductacademy.org or you can click the link below in the description. Guys, after you watch the free training, if it sounds like it might be something cool for you to check out, you can book a free call with one of my client success coaches and they'll be able to help you more. Now, back to the video. Now you might be sitting here going, okay, this sounds interesting, but you know, I'm trying to wrap my head around this and I get it, like I've been there too, like trying to wrap my head around like, okay, well, Wealth is like creating value for other people and the more value I create for other people, the more options I will have for myself, okay? Here's something to really consider, okay? So when it comes to wealth, I'm just gonna go to a new page here. When it comes to wealth, the first thing we need to understand is that wealth is relative, okay? So for the, for the small-minded people who are like, well, the more money I have, the more wealthy I am, not necessarily. Money is a measurement of wealth, but money itself is not wealth, okay? So money is relative. For instance, okay, if, if there was a tribal family that lived in the uh, jungle of the, the Amazon jungle, right? And they don't know anything about technology. They don't know anything about social media. They don't know anything um, other than just tribal life, okay? And if that family were to be healthy and happy and they have each other, they've got love, and they've got plenty of, I don't know, coconuts, and they have plenty of harvest of the wild hog, <laughs> whatever, from last night, and they have a big fire, like, they're probably going to feel very, very wealthy, right? So wealth in itself is relative, and I think one of the reasons why is because wealth is measured, watch this, okay? Wealth is measured,
Now remember, money is a measurement of wealth, but it's not the only measurement of wealth. Wealth is measured <clears throat> by past perceived voids. What does that mean? Every single one of us, we grow up in life with these different voids in our life, right? Like my parents, they're incredible parents. Um, you know, they worked extremely hard growing up. And uh, in fact, my dad at one point had like three jobs. My mom at one point had two jobs. Like they were like super hardworking. There was no one in their life to like give them financial literacy knowledge. Right? So because of that, they didn't have the knowledge and therefore because they didn't have the knowledge, they were operating at a lower level in their wealth creation and they just stayed stuck, really just struggling. We were like basically American poor growing up. And I'm saying all this to say, one of the past perceived voids in my life growing up, and it wasn't like, you know, as a kid, you don't really pay attention, but now that I'm an adult, um, you know, we, we were raised in, for a big portion of my childhood, we were raised in a one bedroom apartment with a family of five, right? And then after working extremely hard, and doing all this work then my parents could finally afford like a two bedroom apartment. And we didn't even get into a house until like I was a later teenager. So we just, we grew up in a really small apartment environment and nothing wrong with that, right? Like I didn't die, I'm still here. But one of the perceived values in my life, okay, so here's the thing, past perceived voids, okay, the value that's relative to everyone else when it comes to wealth, your past perceived voids lead to present perceived values. Okay, so a humongous part, remember I said that wealth is having the ability to provide abundant value for someone other than yourself, right? So the first part of wealth building is discovering what is valuable to other people. In my case, this is relative to me, it may not be relative to you, but one thing that I like for me and my family now is I like having a nice house and not just a nice house, a big house. Like, God's bless us, I have a very beautiful, nice house. It's pretty big. And to be honest with you, we're looking at buying an even nicer, even bigger house. Not because there's like this huge, like, you know, hole in my heart and in my soul. It's just because of a past perceived void, now something that's valuable to me is one of my present perceived values. If this is making sense, drop some fire emojis in the comments, okay? If you're getting value, say that's me, okay? So here's what I wanna to submit to you guys, all right? In order to build wealth, you have to discover what people actually desire so that you can begin to bring them value in those areas, right? So, so stop thinking so small around the idea of like, well, I'm just gonna get as much money as possible. Well, what good is money if you can't use it to create more value for someone else? Think about it. The truly wealthy are people who are not limited in their abundance because they have put out tremendous value to the market. Now, please hear me, I'm not talking about our intrinsic value as a son and daughter of God. Yes, every single one of us, we are born with tremendous value because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the value that you can bring to your market, to your niche, to your people, I'm just telling you right now, if you want to grow in wealth, you have got to be able to provide an abundant amount of value because the person or the people who can provide an abundant amount of value to their community, to the world, are going to be the people who never run out of the abundance of options because the more value you put out into the world, the more people are going to say thank you with a measurement of a dollar bill. And how do I know this is true? Watch this, come back with me here to the board, okay? So remember we're talking about this deserted island here, okay, and you're here by yourself. Well, if you're just sitting here by yourself and you got a pile of 50 million cash, but there's nothing to buy, there's no one there, and really all you want is water, it's worthless, right? But what if there's a second person here on the island, okay? And this person here, is extremely thirsty, right? 
and they're just, they're bothered. Oh man, I'm so thirsty. But this person over here, they have this beautiful cup. No, 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 this beautiful gallon. How about a gallon? They've got this beautiful gallon of cool drinking water, right? So let me ask you a question now. Who is the wealthy one in this situation? Well, the answer is obvious. It's the person who has something that can provide value to someone else. I need at least 10 people in the comments right now, drop these words, provide value. You gotta change your mindset when it comes to wealth, guys. You gotta start thinking differently. This isn't just about like, I'm gonna get, 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 get. That's not a wealthy mentality. A wealthy mentality is how can I provide as much value as humanly possible to my audience, to the world, and put so much value out there that I never have to worry about if I'm going to have an abundance of options. And notice I didn't say in the second part of my description of wealth, the second part of my description of wealth is provide you know, an abundance of wealth, uh, sorry, an abundance of value to someone other than yourself, second part, so that you can have an abundance of options. And notice I didn't say an abundance of money, I said an abundance of options. What does money actually bring? It brings options, man, it brings freedom. Really at the end of the day, what you and I both desire is not necessarily more money, like maybe at the surface level that would be helpful, but what you and I and everybody else on the planet, what we actually desire is more freedom, more options. Like how many of you would love to just drop whatever you're doing right now, book and charter out a private jet to Hawaii for the next two months and stay at the Grand Walea, that's where me and my family stay, we love it there. Stay at the Grand Walea for two months and just chill out for as long as you want because you just can. Like, if that's you, just drop it in the comments, say that's me. Like, who wouldn't want that, right? And the way that we can do that is with money, but the actual way that we were really able to have the abundance of options is we provided enough value out into the world that enough people said thank you with a measurement of the dollar, okay? So to wrap this concept up, you've really gotta to begin to understand that money is not wealth, money is a me measurement of wealth, okay? It's a measurement, meaning however much money you have, it's just a sign you have provided this much wealth to the planet, okay? Wealth is relative because wealth might mean something to you than it does to me. Like rich and wealthy, they're two different things. Okay, like there are plenty of people out there who may not consider me wealthy and it has nothing to do with what they think because I am wealthy and it has nothing to do with how much money I have. It has everything to do with the life and the abundance of options that I'm able to have in my life, right? Because I've provided an abundance of value to my community, right? So wealth is relative to each and every person and wealth is measured in past perceived voids that lead to present perceived values. So let me give you a wealth secret that you need to begin to apply right now in order for you to build insane, crazy, tremendous wealth in your business, okay, in your, in your life. You have got to begin to discover what does your community want? What are their problems? What is your audience's desires, right? Like, what is it? If you can see their perceived voids and say, yo, my thing helps with your perceived void, you will have no trouble becoming wealthy. If this is making sense, just say making sense down in the comments, okay? So I wanna open up the scripture here to us. This is pretty cool. How many of y'all know that Every single wealth secret you could ever want, that you could ever imagine, it's all found in the Bible, man. Like everything that is for our good, it's, it's in the Bible. And I wanna lead you guys here, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 through 26. I'm just gonna read all three scriptures and then we're gonna break them down, each and every one, okay? Proverbs 11, 24 through 26 says it like this. Give freely and become more wealthy but stinginess only leads to poverty. Verse 25, 
the generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters others will also be watered himself. And the next verse, verse 26 says, one who withholds grain, the people will curse him, but a blessing will be on the head of him or her who sells it. Okay, so watch this. King Solomon is literally encouraging us, guys, if you want to be wealthy, number one, let's look at verse 24. The first thing you gotta do if you wanna be wealthy, and this aligns with my, uh, with my description of wealth, is you've got to bring value to the market. So King Solomon says it like this. You've got to give freely. Basically he's saying you've got to be generous with putting value out into the market. Because if you can give freely, that means you become more wealthy. And the opposite is true. And it literally says, if you're stingy, it will lead to poverty. How many of y'all know that God has set up the universe and God has set up the global economy to run off of this principle. God has put good stuff on the inside of you and he's put good stuff on the inside of me and he's put a skill in you and a skill in me and he's put a gift in you and a gift in me, something good inside each and every one of us that he says, I want you to go take that good thing that I've deposited in you and I want you to go figure out how to make people's lives better with that thing that I've put in your life. See, this is a backwards thinking of the world's way of what is wealth. The world's way is like, I'm just gonna get more, woo! But guess what? That, that hoarder, right, that's stingy, that, that's just me, 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 that just leads to poverty, man, right? True wealth is the ability to provide abundant value to someone other than yourself. Go take that incredibly special gift that God's put in your life and become obsessive with serving other people with it, man. When you begin to get really, really good at serving people with that gift, with that passion that God has put on the inside of you, you will have no problem providing abundant value to the market. And therefore, in return, they will have no problem saying thank you in the form of the measurement of dollar bills. Are y'all tracking? If you're tracking, drop it in the comments. Say, I'm tracking, I'm tracking, I'm tracking, okay? So that's the first part of this three-part uh, idea in the book of Proverbs. So that's Proverbs 11, 24. Let's look at Proverbs 11, 25, okay? The second part, Proverbs 11, 25, says it like this. The generous soul will be made rich, and I'm just gonna highlight the second part. He who waters others will be watered himself. Now, I don't know about you, but to like the natural mind, like it, this makes absolutely no sense. Like, wait, wait, if I take my water in this context, right? If I take my gift and I go and like give it to somebody else, like naturally, logically, like it would run out. But God has set up the universe and God has set up the global economy to function off of this. If you take that gift that I've put in you and you go water other people, water as many people as you can with that gift, with that water, guess what's gonna happen to you? You yourself will be watered. You wanna build wealth, man? Go make somebody life's amazing. Go make someone's life's life amazing by using your skill, using your talent, giving them, providing them abundant value. Like this is so, so crazy, right? Like this is, this is one sign to me that I was like, man, we're about to step into some crazy wealth here, right? Because uh, just the other day, some of you guys and gals see, I, I cut my hair recently. It's cool. And I was at the barber. This is so insane, man. I was at the barber just yesterday. Okay. And I walk in just minding my own business. And uh, the barber, it's this, it's this uh, lady and she's, she's sweetest lady. She's working on my hair. And, um, you know, she's, she's doing the thing and I'm on a business call. And so I've got my AirPod in here and I'm just doing the call and I jump off the call and this lady is like, oh my gosh, this is, this is so insane. Like I said, what's insane? She said, I just, 
like your your YouTube stuff, like this is crazy. I was just asking God, like God, if this thing of like building wealth is really true, like can you please just like send somebody to me? And she goes, all of a sudden you walk in here, I'm checking out your YouTube stuff and you're sitting in my chair and I'm like cutting your hair. Like, y'all, she had no idea. I had no idea. Neither of us had any idea. And here I, I just walk in, I sit down, like they're following my YouTube stuff now, right? And they're just like, wait a second, you're in my chair? Like this is insane. Like I'm telling you right now and I would have never have been able to have that experience if I wasn't putting out weekly trainings on YouTube, just like sowing value out into the market, man, right? Like, guys, I'm telling you right now, you have got to become obsessed with bringing value to other people, man, with helping their lives become better with that thing or those things that God has put in you. Go serve them, man. Go make their life better. Go bring them insane value. Because when you do that, there is no way possible that it will not lead to an abundance of options for you and your family, okay? And then let's look at the third part of this passage here in Proverbs. This is so cool, man. If you're digging it, just say, I'm digging it in the comments, okay? Check this out. The third part of this, Proverbs 11:26. this is so incredible. Watch this. He who withholds the corn, the people curse him. Okay, so let me say it like this. He who withholds the corn, the people curse him. Okay, but a blessing, someone in the comments say blessing, but a blessing will be upon the head of him or her who sells it. What? What? Like, I'm telling you guys and gals right now, this good thing that God has put in your life, that he has put in your heart, put in your life, the skill, the skill sets, all the different tool sets, everything that God has put in your life, everything in your life that has led you up until this point, God has said, I want you to get really, really passionate and really, really good at learning how to serve the world with this thing. And don't just only put stuff out for free. Yes, you should put content out for free, I believe. But you should also sell it. It's like, what? Like, do you know how many people right now, they're like really, really hurting for money, right? They're like, man, if only I could get ahead. If only I could just make a little bit more money. Man, I would, man, it must be nice to be rich. I'm telling you right now. Well, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> If you were to figure out a way how to put something of value together to serve your market and then give them some free samples, right? So value into them for free, but then also have an opportunity for them to buy from you. Like, do you know how, how here's, I believe this. The reason why so many people struggle financially is because of this, watch this. The reason why so many people struggle financially is because they are withholding the corn, the good thing that God has put in them. So guess what? They're almost like cursing themselves, man. I'm scared to like sell my thing. I'm scared to tell people about my thing that I created. I'm scared. Like if you withhold it, no wonder why you're broke. Like there, there is a curse if you're withholding it. But for he or her who sells it, watch this. A blessing, a blessing will be on the head who, whoops, sells it. And here's the interesting thing, okay? The interesting thing about this is the Bible doesn't say a blessing will be upon the head of him who gives everything away for free. I know that's like a real like church mindset. Well, freely you receive, freely give, brother. Yeah, you're, you're using that scripture in that context in that way to benefit you, right? Like, well, you should give everything to me for free. Like... But that's not what the Bible says here, right? In fact, that, that verse, freely you, receive, freely you receive, freely give, it's in the context of spiritual things. Like heal the sick, cleanse the leper, cast out devils, freely you receive, freely give. It's not saying to give your business stuff away for free. It's saying all these spiritual things that God has given you, you should do those for free. But the business stuff, if you want to be blessed, you need to sell it. 
Drop some fire emojis in the, in the comments if something's unlocking for you right now, okay? You've gotta understand this, man. Solomon, wisest man who ever lived. I'm gonna read it one more time. Give freely and become more wealthy. But stinginess only leads to poverty. Proverbs 11, 24 to 26. Verse 25, the generous soul will be made rich and he who waters will also be watered himself. One who withholds the grain, the people will curse him, but a blessing will be on the head of him or her who sells it. So you wanna grow in wealth? You've got to learn how to provide abundant value to someone other than yourself so that you can in turn receive abundant options for your life. Okay, so now that you know that wealth is created by providing abundant value to others, my question to you is how can you create wealth for yourself? Well, let's go here to the board and we're gonna break it down. Hey, real quick, if you've made it this far into the video and you're liking it, do me a favor, share this video with somebody that you think might also receive some value. My biggest heart in this channel is to simply bring some awareness, financial literacy, and do it all from a biblical perspective. So go ahead and share the video, like and subscribe, do all that stuff too. Back to the video. I'm gonna give you just uh, four different steps here, and I think they're gonna be super helpful for you. Step number one, this one's a given, but most people don't even do this. Number one, choose who you wanna serve. Who do you wanna serve, right? Like it, a lot, of, a lot of people, especially like Christians, you know, they'll, they'll use language like, I feel called to serve. That's cool. If you're called to do it, that's fine. But can I help you? Don't sit around waiting to feel called. Like what's even better than feeling called is to choose to serve. Like I'm going to choose to serve this group of people. And for you, the best audience, the best market, the best people to serve, in my opinion, especially if you're first starting out, is to serve the people who are like who you were five or 10 years ago. Rewind in your mind five or 10 years who you were then and the journey that you had to take in order to become who you are now, okay? Now that you know what you know, being in the season that you're in, becoming the person that you have become, how would you mentor yourself five or 10 years ago? That question is going to lead you to a very obvious choice of an audience that you can choose to serve. Okay, so that's step number one. You have to choose who do you want to serve. Okay, step number two. Discover what is valuable to them. See, most people make this problem. The reason why most people can't sell their product, their service, right, their, their thing, their value to the market is because most people are trying to sell something that is valuable to them instead of trying to sell something that is valuable to their market. And I completely understand this, right, because you're the one who knows the blood, sweat, and tears that it took. You're the one who knows the actual intrinsic value of your product, of your service, of your course, of your offer, of your program, okay? But the only thing that your market knows before they pay you is the perceived value, okay? That's the only thing they don't. They don't know the intrinsic value of what you can bring. All they know is the perceived value of what you can do and as far as how quickly you can get them a transformation. So what does that mean? It means you've got to discover what's valuable to your market. If you don't know what's valuable to your market, remember earlier, we talked about past perceived voids. Like what is a past perceived void that people in your market usually have in on mass, right? Like maybe if it's um, musicians, one of the past perceived voids there is, um, there's a lot of them, right? It's, I don't know how to play. I don't know how to sing. I don't know how to write a song. I don't have money for the equipment, right? Maybe your niche is um, uh, basketball, right? You wanna help people in basketball. What's the past perceived voids there? Um, no one was there to help me practice when I was growing up. 
Uh, I don't know how to shoot correctly. I've never been good at three pointers, whatever it is, right? Um, we have, we have uh, students who are in all kinds of different niches, serving all kinds of different markets. And the punchline is this, if you can know what is desirable and what is valuable to them, guess what? It leads us to step number three. Whenever you figure out what is valuable, and here's the punchline, to them, then all you gotta do is solve that problem with a product or, oops, product or service. You've got this big problem, I've got this big answer, we should connect, right? Like, I wanna bring abundance of value to you and hopefully if I serve you correctly and if I serve enough of you all correctly at a high enough level, then it's going to lead to measurements of wealth being brought back into my life in the form of dollar signs. And the more measurements of wealth I have coming back into my life, the more abundance of options and the more freedom I will have, okay? So the third thing you got to do, you got to put together your product or your service. What we teach uh, is digital products, right? Put together a course, put together an ebook, put together a program, put together a mentorship, right? Put together something that you can create one time and then after the work is done up front, you put it out there and it brings you value, bring, sorry, brings your clients value over and over and over and then they pay you over and over and over and over. Okay, so that's the third step. And then what's the fourth practical step that you can take to begin to build true wealth for you, your children, and your children's children? Step number four, okay. Now that you've discovered all this, do it for as many people as possible, okay? Like, this is so interesting to me, but why in the world are companies like Apple or Amazon or Starbucks, why are these companies so massively wealthy? Well, it's not because they're sitting on piles of cash, even though they are, that's a measurement of their wealth. How do they get so wealthy? Because companies that go big, they serve more people. <laughs> They're bringing more value to people en masse. And because they're giving insane value to tons of people every single day, guess what's happening? They are building wealth because all of us are telling Starbucks, thank you so much for my coffee. Here is a measurement of wealth. Thank you, Apple, for my phone and my laptop. Here is my thank you coupon in a measurement of wealth called money. Thank you, Amazon. Come on, y'all, keep it real. There are Amazon boxes on your porch right now that you don't even remember what you ordered and you said, thank you so much, Amazon, for making my life better. Here is my measurement of wealth back to you in the form of a dollar. You provided value to me. I'm gonna provide a measurement of wealth back to you and we are going to have a symbiotic relationship here, guys. Are y'all tracking? Are y'all tracking with this, okay? So the biggest thing you've got to remember, guys, because wealth is the ability to provide abundant value for someone other than yourself, then you have got to figure out how can I provide that abundant value for someone else so that you can stack up these measurements of wealth and have an abundance of option for you and your family and your children's children.